right, so this time we're going to talk about how UART works kind of under the hood, right? So um, for your lab, the thing you care about is what we've done in the last video lectures, like how do you actually write the code, how do you do the communication. Um, but for your exams, a lot of the times what you'll care about is, you know, how is this going under the hood, because those are the questions we're going to ask you about. So we're going to start with this picture here. Um, and I'm going to explain a couple things in this picture. So the way your communication works is it actually sends uh, 10 bits. 10 bits, um, that's a single packet. The reason there are 10 is because the first bit is a start byte, uh, which is always low, and then the last bit is a stop byte, which is always high. So the way UART works is it sends this chunk of 10 um, and then it goes idle. Anytime uh, the system is idle, the line is high, which you actually knew that because if you watch those LEDs, they're on um, until like it does a send, then like it flickers low, right? So before this thing started, it was in an idle state. Um, as soon as the message starts, it does a low, right? Which makes sense. Your first byte has to be a low because it says, here comes a message. Uh, and then you've actually got your eight data bits. Um, the weird thing about the eight data bits is they actually come in least significant bit first. Oh, which I know that's weird. Um, so if you were passing in the number zero uh, x seven, for example, in binary that is looks like this. So the way you would send it is you would actually send it one one one, and then all the zeros, right? So if I was sending this message, it would be. Uh, I'll use a different color here. It would be high when it's idle, low for the start, high for these three, and then low, uh, and then the stop bit is high. And then after the stop bit, it goes into idle, and so it just stays high forever. So that's how this thing works. The other thing you need to know is how fast does it do this. Um, UART communication is based on what's called a baud rate. So a baud rate is how fast do you send each bit. Um, so this baud rate here is 9600. That actually stands for bits uh, per second. And then comically, um, if you wanted to figure up the number of bytes per second, it's quite easy because there are 10 bits for each byte that goes through. So there's actually, at this baud rate, there's 960 bytes that get transferred uh, every second. To be honest, 960, that's almost a thousand bytes, that's actually extremely slow. Um, and there's a lot of faster communication mechanisms out there. Um, and even for serial communication, it's fairly slow. But this is how this thing is calculated. Um, and so what you need to know is you need to know what is the time between these edges. The time between these edges in this case is 104 microseconds. It's just how the math works out. And then by the time you have 10 of them, you've got uh, 1,042 microseconds. So this entire message takes about one millisecond to send, right? So one millisecond, boom, there's, uh, there's that. You can send a thousand of them roughly at a second. That's the speed of communication. So let's go ahead and do one example uh, completely together. Oops. Uh, first off, I'll say there are a lot of baud rates. The most popular ones you hear are 9600. This is the one uh, that we'll use in lab, right? Um, and then there are a lot of other ones as well. 19.2 is popular. Um, oh, and people are cool. They say 19.2 when really it's 19,200 bits per second. So 19.2, 57.6, and then kind of the fastest like accepted speed is 115.2. That's kind of the fastest like recommended speed uh, for most serial communication. If you want to go faster than that, use a different protocol, right? There's also some other things like modems used to be 14.4 modems. Like I, I owned a 14.4 modem back when I, I connected uh, via phone line to my bulletin board systems. Um, and then there were 28.8 modems. Nobody uses those anymore. MIDI gets used sometime, that's a music frequency. The main ones you'll see are these four. Um, and in this class, you only care about 9600. So let's go ahead and do a timing chart together. 
Uh, so we'll just kind of do this one together from scratch. Um, here we're going to send the number five, right? So just the plain old number five. Five looks like this. Um, so, so I know that the pattern is going to be flipped. So the thing that's going to get sent is going to be a one, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. So I can actually draw those on now. So I know that those are high, low, high, low, 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 low. The only thing I need to add to this signal is I need to add the start bit. So I'm going to add the start here. So you can see I kind of cleverly started down a little bit. The start bit is always low. Um, and I also need to add the idle, right? So this thing is idle coming in here. Um, I don't know if you can see that very well, but that's idle out there. And then, of course, at the other end, we've got to add the stop bit. So there's the stop bit. Uh, and then I'll add, uh, and then it's idle after that. Then the next question is, we said 9600 was the, uh, the speed. Um, so we've got to figure out um, the timing on each of these guys. Instead of writing them all, I usually just say, like, that's, that's zero, uh, that's delta, and then three delta, four delta, five delta, all the way up to ten deltas. And then I just say, what is delta in this case? Um, so delta in this case is, um, so to do the math, you just have to figure out what is one over uh, 19 two, right? So it turns out to be 52 microseconds. Um, and so that's how big delta is. Technically, I could have said 52.0833333. Um, to the nearest microsecond will be fine. So this overall thing, it takes um, 520 microseconds to do a send. So you can see that 19.2, it's about twice as fast <laughs> as 9600. Uh, pretty easy. So we did that one together. Uh, do this one all by yourself. So take a minute and see if you can do this problem. All right, I'm going to work it as well. So first off, I'll say five. Um, we were sneaky here. Uh, we said five in ASCII. Um, so five in ASCII is really 53. Um, you can go look that up on an ASCII table. You can also remember that if 48 is zero, which is what I actually do, I remember that, um, then 49 must be one, 50, 51, 52, uh, 53 uh, is one, two, three, four, five. Um, so that's how I knew it was 53. 53, if you write it out in hexadecimal, it's gonna work out to be zero X three, five, um, it actually turns out that I could have done that math even easier because the 5 I knew was going to be here um, and then the 3 is actually just 48. So if you happen to know how that works, that's great. Um, so moving along, so this thing looks like this. So whenever somebody says to send the ASCII character 5, uh, you could just as easily write it in binary just like that. Now the trick is uh, we've got to flip it. So the flipped, I'm just going to go and write it right on my chart here. Um, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. So I just reversed it because it's least significant bit first. And then easily enough I can draw this guy, right? See neater. Uh, and then I'm going to have a stop bit at the end. Uh, and a start bit at the, the start. And then along the same lines, I could do my deltas, um, you know, all the way up to 10 delta. And delta in this case is equal to 1 over 57.6, which is 17, uh, you know, 0.36 microseconds. Um, so you can see 57.6 quite a bit faster. Uh, so you can send a lot more data if you go at a speed like 57.6. Great. So Pretty straightforward, just a lot of steps um, in figuring out what it is in binary and then flipping it before you put it into this chart. The other thing that we should need to learn is how do I actually like put this in code? Uh, so the important things are right here. So whenever we called this the uart command, we said 
uh, use baud rate um, high and use the parameter 25. There's two things going on here. One is whether you're using high speed or low speed. Um, and that just tells you which formula you should use. Um, we're pretty much going to only use high speed so you can get rid of low speed so you don't need that. And the formula is fairly simple. It says the frequency of your oscillator uh, which for most of the time we're using 4 megahertz divided by 16 times um, SPBRG, this last value here is called SPBRG. Um, I think it stands for Serial Port Baud Rate Generator or something like that. Um, but it just drops into this formula, 25 plus 1, uh, and now you see what this value is. And it turns out to be uh, 9615.6. Uh, so you might be surprised by that. So it's not exactly 9600. So actually the microcontroller is going at one speed and then the computer is expecting exactly 9600 so that they actually are a little bit off. The question is how much off are they? Um, and if you wanted to, you could actually get the percentage off that this is, right? So it'd be just, um, so the amount of error um, is just this formula and you can see how far off it is. Um, and if you look at how much off this guy is, it's actually pretty small. It's like 0.16%. Uh, so I went ahead and converted it to a percentage. Um, in general, you're shooting for trying to be less than a 2% difference is your goal. So you usually you have to figure out what you want um, and then you see if what you want is within 2% um, of what you need, right? Um, if it's not, um, you have two options. Option one is just see if it works. Um, option two is try to figure up some way to fix it. Uh, so your turn. Uh, so calculate, um, assuming you have a one megahertz clock, um, what is SPBRG? So this is the reverse of what we just did if you wanted uh, 19.2. So pause the video, uh, see if you can figure out what this thing should be in, in that formula. All right, so I'm going to solve it as well. Uh, my first thing I have to decide is whether I want to use high speed or low speed. Um, we pretty much always use high speed, so I need this formula here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that into the next slide. So I start with this formula. My frequency of my oscillator here is uh, 1 megahertz. Uh, so I just have to solve this guy for SPBRG. Uh, and so I, I'll just do the math on this guy. I think it works out to be a 2.255. Um, of course, SPBRG has to be an integer, so you would round to the nearest integer. So I would use uh, 2, right? The next thing you should do is you should see if this actually is a good value or not. So if, if you were just required to do this, you know, you, you wouldn't have any choice. Um, but you really should check it. Um, so let's go ahead and check it and let's do the reverse. Uh, so this actually misses by 8.5%. Um, so if you were giving, if you were given this as an exam question, um, so I would answer it. Uh, I would say SPBRG equals two, and I would put a big box around it. And then I would say note, um, you know, misses are so off by, um, you know, 8.5 percent um, so therefore not recommended right not great it might work right like it might work just fine um, but it's not recommended unless you can get really close so I mean one of the ways you would fix this is you you might try a different clock right so instead of a 1 megahertz you might try an 8 megahertz or something faster just wanted to do a demo for how the math worked. I intentionally picked one that was going to fail. I wasn't that worried about it, uh, just so you're aware of that issue. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say, we're not going to go through it here, is you also have to worry about the other end of communication. So like, you have to actually write code um, on your computer uh, to receive these things and to send useful things back. Um, to get started, we're going to use a program called Secure CRT. 
um, which is just a simple program for, for talking to a number of devices. Um, it can do serial communication. But ultimately what we want to do is we want to talk to MATLAB, right? So that's what we really want to talk to. So we'll worry about those things in the lab. All right, that's all you got for serial communication. There's one more optional topic, but you don't have to listen to it if you don't want. See you in class. Bye.